Alright, so correct that's quantum mechanics, problem 4.24. Um, this is a rigid rotator problem, a rigid rotor. Um, so we have two particles of mass m. Okay. Um, they're attached to the ends of a massless rigid rod of length a. Like this. The system is free to rotate in three dimensions about the center, but the center point itself is fixed. So this center point here is fixed, um, but the, they're completely free to rotate in any direction. All right, we're going to show that the allowed energies of the rigid rotor are uh, given by this equation. steps, zero, up to infinity. Okay. All right, and he even gives us a hint. Uh, first express the classical energy in terms of the total angular momentum. All right, so this is a very, uh, it'd be a, a strange problem. It, it, it takes a while if you haven't seen the, uh, the answer, unless you're really clever, I guess. Um, so, um, but if you've seen this sort of thing before, it boils down to something that's really easy. So normally, we have our Schrodinger equation, time independent. We just act on a, a wave function with the Hamiltonian operator and get the energy out. Normally, for uh, our trans, for just normal translational motion, it's most convenient to use p squared over 2m. Um, but this would look very, very complicated if we use it for an angular uh, type system such as this. Um, so um, if we remember from classical mechanics, basically the uh, there's an, it's almost a direct analogy, right? Um, we, instead of momentum, we have an angular momentum, and instead of a mass, we have the moment of inertia. So, rather than our Hamiltonian looking like this, we're going to write it, just like Griffith suggests, express that it in, terms of the total angular momentum, All right? So P goes to L, and then we have two uh, times the moment of inertia on the bottom. And the uh, moment of inertia for one mass is mR squared. For two masses, it's two times that, and uh, that when they're both, you know, the same distance from the point of rotation. So we have a two, and then uh, inside here we have a two m r squared, where r is the distance uh, from the the point of rotation to the mass, right? So in this case, it's a halves squared, right? Because it's the square of, right? A halves, a over two is the distance from the point of rotation to the mass. Okay, so let's look at this real quick. So we have a, a four, two and two, and then we have two on the bottom. So those, all the twos go away. And we just are left with m a squared. All right. So when we go back to you know our Schrodinger equation here, now the the Hamiltonian that we're using is just this. 
All right. So I'll write that out. Okay. And we know the eigenvalues of uh, L squared, right? So we'll, we'll still get this term, the so 1 over ma squared, carry over. But now we know these eigenvalues, right? It's L times L plus 1 and h bar squared. So uh, again, back on our Schrodinger equation, we have the Hamiltonian multiplied by the wave function equals the energy times wave function. So here's the Hamiltonian part, and here is the eigenvalue part, and then of course our eigenfunction, that's just the wave function. So um, I, I should not have drawn that this way because it looks like a fraction or something, I don't know. All right. So basically, E equals L, L plus 1, h bar squared over m a squared, which is the same thing that uh, Griffiths has uh, that we were asked to show right here, except he uses the letter n instead of L, um, because we just typically use n with energy and so now that we're talking about the the energy here rather than once we once we have this constant here right we're talking about the energy not just the angular momentum and there's no translational energy anything whatever so uh when we when we're talking about the energy usually the the um quantum number for that is n so in this case, we can just change the label. All right, so there we go, that's part A. All right, so what are the normalized eigenfunctions for the system? What is the degeneracy of the nth energy level? All right, well, we know what the eigenfunctions for L squared are, right? It's just the spherical harmonics. And these are already normalized. And so the only you know, difference uh, in this whole thing, rather than just doing an, an L squared and, and finding the, the eigenvalues of this, uh, we just have these constant out front to make it, you know, an energy. But uh, the wave functions are still just the spherical harmonics. And so, and, the, and they just have the normal degeneracy. So if we have a, well, okay, since we're calling them by n, I guess we could write this like with an n here and an m here, right? But the degeneracy is just going to be normal uh, 2n plus 1 uh, or, or 2l plus 1 just depending on what label you use again we're using n here because we're talking about energy but it's just a number so um, and right so it's 2n plus 1 because it runs from minus n minus n plus 1 and then we hit zero, so here's the, the plus one part. And then one all the way up to positive n. Okay, so there's the, de the degenerate, the degeneracies of the nth energy level. 